Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Blurry Day back with the Mr. Blue podcast. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the last one. I don't know why, but um, I haven't fully acknowledged this this year. But you know, uh, I'm I'm on the same boat with a lot of people. No, nobody cares about this specific anniversary. And you guys already saw the title. You clicked on this video, so I'm going to be giving my personal thoughts about it. So, on yesterday's collection update video, I did my collection video on my Disney and Fox collection, right? I wasn't doing it out of, like, oh, we got to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Disney, right? Like, again... I do not care, okay? And again, a lot of people are on the same boat too because, like, we, we just don't care. We don't care anymore. And yes, granted, Disney in recent years, like, they, they, they have put out some good stuff, right? Like, um, not a whole lot, but just... They're getting there. Like, again, whatever happened to, you know, the House of Mouse, right? Like, Disney used to be this safe place for, for kids, really, like, and, no, they're not really safe for, for, not just kids in general, but, like, families in general, right, like, you got these stupid, stupid agendas that you put in your stuff, and it, it is so annoying. <sighs> At this point, I will not be surprised on what uh, Disney buys anymore. And then, you know, there's there's been a running gag in recent years, like, oh, Disney runs the world, or they're they're gonna they're gonna rule the world. Like, if it comes to that, I don't know if I'll live with myself. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but I am happy with like Disney is making more. You know. Um, I, I'm trying to say this is the best way I can, like, not to sound like, you know, like, inappropriate or anything, but, like, like more, uh, more adult content, right? Like, and yes, in the past, um, Disney has pushed the boundaries a little bit by making, you know, obviously live-action Disney movies, right? Like, you got the Narnia movies, um, Pirates of the Caribbean, John Carter, you know, anything else you could think of that Disney has made for PG-13, and... You know, when Disney acquired Marvel Studios back in 2009, that was a whole new ball game. Like, okay, like, um, the PG-13 Disney stuff will take a more bigger effect, right? Like, oh my gosh, like, um, I was just happy how the Marvel Studios movies turn out to be, you know, like the good old days of Marvel, you know? And then when, again, when, when Disney bought... Lucasfilm in 2012, that was a whole other ball game. Like, um, I honestly thought, because I remember reading this article after Disney bought Lucasfilm, right? They said, like, they were only going to make six more films. Again, like, Roman numerals, like, episodes, like, seven through twelve. And as much as I hated hearing that, like, I was just like, I just want to see more Star Wars, and I had no idea that, you know, Disney was planning out some more stuff, like, um, it's good to have, uh, TV shows in this franchise, like, some people are calling this, like, the Star Wars Cinematic Universe, like, let me tell you something, Star Wars has always, always been a cinematic universe since 1977, some could argue, like, oh, it's been a cinematic universe since, like, the prequels and the Clone Wars, like, again, that's, that's a pretty uh, unpopular opinion, but, like, Star Wars has always been a cinematic universe since 1977. Yep, George knew what he was doing. <laughs> um, like, uh, again, back to to this stuff. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just happy that Disney is coming out, like, still doing more adult content. <laughs> again, that sounds so bad, but, but, but at the same time, at the same time, guys... Uh, hopefully you guys saw that Echo trailer yesterday, um, or, n no, it wasn't yesterday, it was, it was two days ago, never mind, never mind, I, I'm, I'm getting my days mixed up here, I'm sorry guys, um, it will be the first MA show in the MCU, right? 
on a technicality, let's say, because technically, technically, guys, the first MA show in the MCU would be Daredevil, right? So, again, this is on a technicality here, so... But, but then again, the Netflix shows are still canon, so... Um, take it as you will, right? Um... And, you know, we're getting Marvel Zombies, M.A., and then we're getting Deadpool 3, Rated R, you know. The possibilities are endless. Um, but I know it's going to be another way for, like, for kids to watch them because, you know, it's Disney, right? Sure, it's not good. It's, these projects are not going to be made for kids, but kids can still watch them. Like, that does make sense. Um... Yeah, I, I just don't know, like, how much of the language they're going to use for future uh, mature content, right? I mean, we've had a fair amount with the Netflix shows, right? Um, so, uh, if you guys are not ready for this stuff, like, I, just, just go back and watch the Netflix shows and just try to prepare yourselves. Um, and just to, like, get, give, it a, give them a watch, see what you think. Um, yeah, um, 2019, I think we all can agree that it got pretty bad with, with Disney now, like, um, like, I think Captain Marvel is a decent movie. It's a very divisive film for obvious reasons, but, um, you could definitely tell there was some, some stuff that was going on in there in an end game. <sighs> As much as, like, like I loved it back in the day, but it was so much for me to process, and until, like, in my early adult years, I've, I've, I've come to accept the reality is that it's, it's a decent film. That's just, that's just my personal opinion, guys. Like, you don't have to agree with me. I know there's a lot of people that still love it. I, I still prefer Infinity War over Endgame. Um, yeah. And Far From Home, which was like the last one in Phase 3 and part of the Infinity Saga, that one was also decent, but I I, I don't know I don't know if it's safe to say that it is better than Endgame, but, um, you know, uh, again, I'll, I'll, I'll appreciate Far From Home more when I get older, because like right now it's just, I still think it's a decent film, but again, it, it could be better than Endgame, I don't know, um, yeah, and then I remember seeing I remember seeing images early this year, guys, when Disney they were doing uh Best Buy exclusive steelbooks, right? But they were doing again for the hundredth anniversary, they were doing, you know, specific uh franchises and for Star Wars they only did the original trilogy, but the uh Disney is I guess, you know, I I don't know if you call this recapping, but back in the day Disney did something like this, like they had steel tins for like, what is it, classic Mickey Mouse cartoons, from from what I, I've heard, guys, like, uh, if you guys have those uh, tins, if you know what I'm talking about, and for, for, oh my gosh, the original trilogy, they, they didn't do crap, like, they, they only had like, a small picture of one character and the rest of it is just like a uh, silver like in, in the front and probably in the back like nobody's gonna want to buy these and i think those are overpriced right like again the, those steel books are an example here like i'm happy that we don't have them on like on any other stores like best buy you could just yeah just stop selling those um, I do like the, uh, the slip covers that we do get for the Blu-rays. Um, I have one of them. Um, but of course, I am not that committed to get every Disney Blu-ray that has that cover, right? Like, the all the, uh, 100th anniversary, like, yeah, like, one is good enough. Like, if they did that for, for both Marvel and Star Wars, like... No, I'm fine with the current covers that we have, you know. Um, and of course, TikTok is trying to make a big deal of it. Like, again, TikTok is 
guilty for trying to make things work and, you know, hip with the kids. Like, oh my gosh, like, no, no. Like, again, people on TikTok who are, who are trying to support the 100th anniversary of Disney just to stop. And what, whatever movie I'm watching that is Disney... I am not thinking about the 100th anniversary. Oh, I have to watch this because it's the 100th anniversary. Like, again, no one gives a crap. I I haven't seen anything from Fox. Like, Disney was, like, get, getting giving them re-releases, giving them, like, the Disney treatment. Like, and, and that's good. Like, I, I don't know. The one franchise I'm thinking about from Fox right now is the Home Alone movies. Like, if they give... At least, you know, one and two slipcovers, like, to match with the rest. Like, I'm done. <laughs> uh, not done with the movies. No, I, I love those movies. I still prefer Home Alone 5. <laughs> yeah, come at me. Um, but, yeah, it's just... It's just... It's just not worth it. Like, Disney, you have lost so many of your customers because because of what you've done in the last recent years. Like, you, you again, you're pushing your agendas. Like, nobody asked for this, okay? Again, Disney, you used to be a safe place for kids. And now that you're not anymore, like, come on. And when, when there's some projects out that, that don't have those agendas, right? In recent years, like, man, people on the internet, they're like... Oh, this thing is bad because Disney doesn't have an agenda or whatever. Like, um, the one thing I'm thinking of is like Luca. I have not watched that movie and I don't tend to, but like people were getting so upset about that movie. Like, um, all I can say is, is that they're straight. They're always going to be straight. Frick off. We don't need those agendas. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and of, of course I knew with Shang-Chi and Eternals, those were experiment fa of films, right? But Shang-Chi had a better excuse, right? Because, um, and I also had no idea he had the connection to, uh, Iron Fist with Eternals. Oh my gosh, the comics didn't work and this movie did not work. Like, guys, this is why we have movies like Rogue One, how they handled diversity in that movie was so good. Like, they, they did not... They did not force it. Like, they did not shove it down our throats. Like, they, they handled it perfectly, right? With Eternals. They... Oh my gosh. They were such tryhards with this one. Seriously, I really wanted Marvel to kill off Fastos because he serves no purpose in the MCU. And... Oh my gosh. I'm honestly hoping for Eternals too that they get like get rid of them, because I I just hate his character so much, so much. Again, come at me. Like I felt like, like, at the time I felt like Disney, uh, because they were family friendly. Um, I thought they weren't playing by the rules of what these other studios were doing. Like, oh, we gotta check mark these boxes, right? We gotta. We got to, like, push agendas and all that. Like, oh my gosh, like, oh, you liberals are killing me. And, again, there was a time where I thought that maybe Disney was part Christian because they had, I I, I don't want to say, like, Christian values and their stuff, but, like, there there were, like, maybe a couple exceptions. Um I don't know if Walt himself had these morals. Um, it, it's been it's been a while since I've read his history, but like I know if if Walt was still alive today, he would not love his like modern Disney, his company. Like, oh my gosh, I know that for a fact. Um. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, a lot of people have, you know, just moved on, forgotten about the 100th anniversary of Disney, because again, nobody cares. When I went into Quantumania, I did not care about the 100th anniversary. When I went to Guardians 3, did not care about the 100th anniversary, you know? Because again, like, 
when I want to see a Disney movie or a Disney show, I expect it to be a good product, right? And this year we've gotten a couple of good products from, from Disney so far. Like, again, Quantumania, Guardians 3, uh, Ahsoka, I Am Groot Season 2, Loki Season 2. I don't know how the Marvels is going to be this next weekend. And like I said, I'm not going to go see it opening day. And hey, if I have to wait for the Blu-ray to come out in a couple of months, that's okay too. Because I am not in a rush to go see it like I was with the first movie. Again, Disney, you gotta stop. You gotta stop with this inclusive stuff, this diversity stuff. Like, no, like again, you're you're shoving it down our throats. Like, like if you really want diversity in your company, um, you have to do it how Rogue One did it. And um, it's pretty funny how Kathleen Kennedy still hates that movie because it's actually good. It's better than the sequels. Like. Gareth Edwards, I still praise him to this day. I really hope that he comes back for Star Wars. Um, I feel like we need another Rogue One type movie for the original trilogy, like between five and six, like how, like may maybe like the Bothans, right? Who who risked their lives to get the Death Star two plans? Maybe we could get something like that. Like I know Lucasfilm is still doing Star Wars stories, so. Um, and and you thought they learned their lesson with the sequel trilogy. Like, why are they giving Ray a solo outing? Like, no, no. I'm I'm happy those movies are no longer canon to the Skywalker saga. Cause like again, Ahsoka confirmed it that the Star Wars multiverse is real. Like, I didn't think it was possible for Star Wars because you know the galaxy is so big, but the you know, anything can happen, you know. Um I just really hope that people aren't upset about the multiverse concept in general. Like, I love it. It was the Flash, really, that got me into the multiverse stuff. Like, you know, the CW show. Like, it's a good thing that Marvel is taking their time slowing down with the multiverse thing and variants so that, like, to get the audience ready... Like, sure, us hardcore fans know about the multiverse, and we're ready for Secret Wars, but that doesn't come out for another few years. But for, for the... Especially for the newcomers who, who are going to watch these projects leading up to King Dynasty and Secret Wars, they're going to they're gonna understand why the Secret Wars, the multiversal war, exists, right? Like, man, I am ready for Tobey Maguire and Hugh Jackman, like, all the way... Let's go. Let's go. Oh, man. Again, me and Disney, we have a love-hate relationship. Obviously, they don't know me, but hey, Disney, I'm still paying you uh, 13 bucks a month for your platform because I'm pretty much an inside guy for Disney. You know, like... Um, like... <laughs> that, that sounds really professional. Like, oh, I work in the company, so therefore I'm going to learn all the secrets. Like, there's so much that I know. Again, if I had a source, and if that source told me everything, I would tell you guys. I know there's some people out there who have sources, and they're they're exposing the company. Like, good, good. Disney needs to learn to fall. Like, they're caught with, caught with their pants down. You know, it, it's still pretty funny that every few months, like, um, Disney Plus. Loses their subscribers, so what does Disney do? They hide it. They try to hide it, like, by bringing out new titles, you know? And I'm happy that Bob Iger is back, because he he's basically the king of Disney, you know? And it's a good thing to bring him back. Yep. Um. Man, I don't know how Dave Filoni and John Favreau are surviving down there, you know? Like, again, they're they're the true saviors of Star Wars now, so... Um, Kathleen Kennedy, you need to back out. Like, you you need to either be fired or quit your job. Like, give the position to Dave Filoni, okay? He knows his Star Wars better than you. Just, just because you knew George, Kathleen, right? Just because you knew George, 
That doesn't mean that you know Star Wars all the way either, right? I mean, the whole company itself, the whole Walt Disney Company, obviously, I'm saying the obvious here, but I'm not going to stop preaching it, but like, greedy, selfish pigs, okay? I have some friends that I try to stay in contact with. They're, they're so funny. They're like, oh, I don't, I don't like Disney or I don't watch Disney. Like, okay, then how come, like, again, like, for example, then how come you watch the Marvel movies, huh? They're made by Disney. So, exposed. <laughs> oh, man. Disney, I used to defend you all the time, especially during the Marvel era, and... I'm not defending you anymore. Like I'm not I'm not justifying your stupidity. Sure, again, like I said, like there's some things that you could justify, like again, with Guardians 3, for example, and, and, and Ahsoka. Like But you need to fix this Disney, okay? Stop being like everyone else and just do your job. Just do your job at Providing great entertainment, okay? I'm just so upset. I'm totally speechless, guys. Like... <laughs> And I know, I know there's some other YouTube channels out there that are just like, sure, they hate Disney with a passion, and they don't give other projects a chance. Like, again, like, with spe specifically with Star Wars and Marvel, like, hey, hey, listen, listen, listen. I know you hate Disney, but you, you gotta see, like, there, there are some good morals in this project. Like, again, Ahsoka is pretty much peak Star Wars, you know, I, I agree. Guardians 3, again, was great. Again, I will never, I am never going to understand why people hate Quantumania. It is a good film. Seriously, guys, every trilogy in a franchise needs to go through changes. They can't be the same thing. They cannot be the same thing. Sure, like the Ant Man movies, they're like, they're like, you know, they're like family movies, right? But like Quantum Mania is also, a, it's still a family movie, but like, it has kind of like a Star Wars twist to it. And I love it. I love that. But you guys are automatically hanging because it had it had a bigger budget. Like, so, aren't you happy with the budget? I I, I don't get that. I'm so confused. But I will say this though, guys. Uh, it's, it still makes me happy to hear that, like, every day, like, I hear that there's independent movie studios coming up because they don't want Hollywood involved, like, good, good. Again, Hollywood, until you get your grubby mitts off of <laughs> projects in general, um, you're not gonna interfere with, um, indie film, filmmakers, like, nope. Like... Why do you think the FNAF movie is so successful? Because Scott Cawthon took eight years to write the script and there were, Hollywood was not involved. Like, oh my gosh, there's no political agendas. Because Scott, don't play like that. And I'm still happy to hear that he's made a comeback because he's making a, a movie tie-in video game. Yep, so if you got a problem with Scott, get out. We don't need you haters. <laughs> um, yeah, the the MCU is pretty divisive right now. Like it 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 kind of used to run the world. Really. <laughs> Again, this the this this was a time when the MCU was good. Um, I don't know what can be the true savior of Marvel now. I mean, I I believe RDJ is back on board of playing uh, Iron Man because, you know, um, again, Marvel is not doing so great. Um, I made a whole video or episode 
on the podcast talking about how they're going to bring back the original six Avengers. So if you want to go check that out, please go ahead. Um, yeah, just Disney, just please keep going back to being the fun, family-friendly company that we all knew and love. Like, sure. Um, before Marvel and Star Wars was in the picture, like in the company, like I'm sure, I'll, maybe, I'm sure there was a lot of haters out there that didn't like like old Disney like that because like it wasn't that fun. I mean, sure, like old Disney Channel and old Disney XD had good stuff, you know. But again, when Marvel and Star Wars came into the company, it's like it's a whole new ball game. Like people see Disney in a whole new perspective. Like. I remember when when those two franchises were becoming bigger again in Disney. Like, okay, this is my new Disney. Marvel and Star Wars, this is my new Disney. And it still is. Still, if Disney did not acquire Lucasfilm back in 2012, Star Wars would still be my all-time favorite franchise. Like, outside of Disney. Like, you know... In or out of Disney, it's still my all-time favorite franchise because, again, Star Wars has helped me out in, like, so many times. So many times. Thanks to George Lucas. Yeah, we're never going to get original content anymore. Like, um, I'm not talking about with streaming services, guys. I'm talking about, like real creativity, right? Like, I watched an interview of this guy who worked in the Hollywood industry, and I, I believe he's out now, but, like, he's really good. Like, um, talks about, like, why most films today, especially in Hollywood, are, are garbage, and I don't blame him, right? But I'm not saying every single film now, like, modern film now that was made by Hollywood is, is garbage, you know, again, there are a few exceptions, right? But, you know, you can't watch everything, right? I don't watch every every movie that comes out, you know? Like, we're not just talking about franchises anymore. We're talking about every movie that comes out, right? Um, I really, I really want to see Opp Oppenheimer so badly because, oh, man, Christopher Nolan, he is such a good director. I I don't know if, if he's considered um, an indie filmmaker, um, but just the way that he makes his films, like, oh, my gosh. Like, they're, oh, my gosh. Like, I know he... He focuses on realism, right? Like that's why that's why people love the Dark Knight trilogy because like it's the realism. Like Batman as a as a character, like he can literally exist in real life. Like most of his villains are real people, right? Um, again, like we could have we could have a a real Joker, you know, like someone could go that insane and. Yeah, I'm like Heath. Heath Ledger definitely proved, um, with with his acting, like what he could, like how he could portray the Joker. Like, come on, even you guys can agree on that. Um. Yeah, I I I need to watch all of Christopher Nolan's films for sure. He's only made a dozen. I I believe Oppenheimer, like that includes this one. Um. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what else to say, guys. Like, um, and who knows? Maybe one day I could, I could create my own independent um, movie studio if I wanted to, you know, cause I, I want to be able to keep this up. Like, you know, as much as I want to work with Dave Filoni and John Favreau so badly, like, oh my gosh, like who wouldn't, I just feel like I need to start out really small like this because, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, trying to commit to a lot of things on my channel. Like again, with fan films, you know, and obviously I, I can't do it all on my own. <laughs> it's impossible. Um, and if most of you guys are wondering, no, I did not watch Spider-Man Lotus. I, 
don't know anything about it. I don't even care about it. Um, just not gonna waste my time. It's it's obviously it's not an official Marvel movie. Um, like I want to see other people like be committed to. Obviously, films like that, but like I, I've heard that the premise of the movie is just so bad, and I'm just not gonna waste my time with that. Like I'm, I'm sure the people behind it did their best, like creating something new, something we haven't seen before, and maybe hopefully get approved by Sony and Marvel Entertainment. But it's just, it, I, I could tell with that, it's just not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. Sure, Sony is independent as well, but they 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 do get help by other studios sometimes too. Like again, Disney is one of them. Um You know, Pureflix, you know, Pureflix is a pretty good independent studio too. Like uh, like it, it's a Christian um movie company, of course. Um, most of, most of the films I've seen from Pure Flix, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Yep. Hi, kitty kitty. Come here. My buddy just woke up from his nap. Hi, bud. Got that look. Okay, again, what else is there to say? Um, like I said, Disney, get your crap together. Stop pushing your agendas and all that. Stop in indoctrinating kids on these again, these specific agendas because they are not necessary. They they are inappropriate. Remember, you're supposed to be family friendly, okay? Not indoctrinating, okay? All right, that's pretty much what I have to say for this video. This is a longer podcast than the last four episodes, but hopefully, you guys are enjoying this. So, um, again, thanks so much for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode on the podcast. Thanks, so bye. May the Lord be with you guys. Always love you guys. Peace out, guys. Stay safe out there. Stay vigilant. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye, guys. Love you.